Uh, Mr. Sams? Mm. What are you doing? What do you mean? Um, it looks like you're sticking styrofoam balls onto your face. I am. And that would be because... And onto the rest of my person. I, I'm, I'm, and they're falling on the I'm floor. I'm making them bond to me. I'm making uh, chemical bonds. Bonds. Chemical bonds. Yeah, sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. This is what we're going to talk about this uh, this time. We're going to be talking about my chemical bonds. Came off. So, so people, Mr. Sams obviously is, needs help. I need more tape. Is he what needs I need. more tape. <laughs> he needs more help. <laughs> he needs more help to do this. So um, I think you need professional help. Well, I have sorry. a counselor friend. Oh yeah? Yeah, yeah. Maybe I'll get Miss Wilson in here to come help you because obviously you need some some deep counseling. Nah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just bonds. It's yeah. Chemical bonds. Well I guess we are talking about chemical bonds. We so are. I guess we should probably start talking about chemical bonds. Alright. Okay, let's do that. Well seriously folks, we really are gonna be talking about chemical bonds and Mr. Sams, as crazy as he is, we have no idea where his brain is today. I don't know what you're talking about. So That's podcast eight point one. Types of bonding, electronegativity, bond polarity, type of moments, ionic size. We're going to talk about all these things. All right, so this is uh, the beginning of chapter 8 in AP Chemistry, uh, using the Zumdahl text, by the way. And that would be the 6th edition. You got star food in your mouth. Yeah. What were you eating? I was not ball? eating star food balls. It was out of my mouth. <laughs> you need help, folks. I've been hanging around Listen with my one-year-old daughter. Listen carefully. He needs desperate they help. Anything that's on the floor. Miss Wilson, come save us. Okay, so here is the schedule for everything for this chapter. 8.1. This, this is actually these sections in the Zumdahl textbook. Even though we call it the 8.1 podcast, it actually is like 8.1 through 8.4 in the Zumdahl book. Okay, so with that said, let's, let's talk about bonding. All right. Folks, do you realize there are three main kinds of bonding? And many of you have seen a chart like this before, but we're going to talk about this. There is ionic bonding, there is covalent bonding, and there is metallic bonding. And then there's tape. And then there's tape. There you go. <laughs> ionic bonding. What's the story on ionic bonding? That is a bond between a... Metal and a non-metal. A metal metal. and a non-metal. Covalent bonding is a bond between a... Two or more non-metals. A non-metal to a non-metal. And a metallic bond would be a metal. Metals. And then covalent bonding has these things called polar, nonpolar, and that's a London dispersion force, hydrogen bonding, dipole forces, and we're going to get into this in great detail mm. as we uh, progress in this particular unit. This unit, by the way, encompasses chapters um, 8 and 9 and then part of 10 in our textbook. So that's where we're going to kind of finish up with. Now, we want to first start talking about what holds everything together. Tape. Tape. <laughs> there you go. Tape holds everything. Duct tape Duct solves. tape specifically. Yes, indeed. We've got our uh, peanut gallery over here. Isabeau is helping us out today. <laughs> okay, um, and the key thing actually, it's not tape that holds everything together. Really? No, it isn't. It's actually Coulomb's law. Oh. Yeah, there was this dude named Coulomb, and he made a law. Hence and they called it Coulomb's the name. law. Yeah. And basically he said that if you have two things with charges, and Q here stands for charge, Q1 and Q2, and then R is what? Uh, the radius or the distance between them. So you have two objects that are close together. They are attracted to each other with a particular amount of energy equal to kq q of r, where um, the value of k is this particular number. And the q is like the charge. So if I have, for example, like sodium and chloride, which is Na positive and Cl negative, q1 would be positive 1 and q2 would be a negative 1. Negative. And uh, hence that gives you the answer. I guess there's no T in there, so there's no tape. I don't see T's in there. No. no okay. I'm thinking not. All right. So what actually holds things together is? Uh, electrostatic attraction. Yeah. Is that the word you're looking for there? That is right. All right. There's static and tape. Yeah. If you put two pieces together and pull them apart, you get a little static right? There you go. And then you can create this electrostatic ah, attraction. Ah, okay. But basically what electrostatic attraction means is that positive things are attracted to negative Negatives. things. Negatives. Now why is that, Mr. Sims? Because opposites attract. Why do opposites attract? Um, makes life more interesting? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> the actual answer is, from a, from a scientific perspective, is we really don't know. Yeah. This is where string theory comes in and all this interesting stuff that basically, why is that the case? And of course, you probably also know if you ever play like a magnet, if you take a positive thing and a positive thing, they actually repel. Why is that? We really, we really don't know. They just do. They just do. We do not know the answer to that question. It's one of those questions of why are the fundamental forces the fundamental forces, and we don't know. We don't know. But we can measure it. We can use it um, to calculate things, et cetera, et cetera. So we know the strength of it, and, but it's an interesting thing. All right. Let's talk about ionic bonds, okay? Um, now, in an ionic bond not diagram, just ionic bonds, what, what, what do the electrons do? 
uh, they are transferred from one atom to another atom. So that's the key thing in an ionic bond. So now we're going to focus a little bit on ionic bonding for a few minutes. Is in an ionic bond, there's a transfer of valence electrons. Actually, I need a blank page, so hold that thought. All right, so what I'm talking about this is when I have a... All right, so if I've got <laughs> sodium, sodium has one valence electron. Yes, it does. Now, we haven't really done Lewis dot structures, but most of you have seen this kind of a concept before. And say chloride has seven um, valence electrons. Okay. And everybody and wants eight. Remember that rule of eight, octet rule. And so the sodium wants to give away one electron, so he ends up with eight. I know it sounds like he'll have zero, but actually have eight on the center la layer. Yeah, the so next layer down. If you were to uh, draw a sodium ion, or sodium atom, you would have eight. This would be what one of the shells. And then another shell would have that's one. That's the one is. Yeah. And that's the one. And this is the one that's going to be given over to the chloride. And then the chlorine, actually the chlorine. The chlorine wants eight. And so when everything is done, when he loses an electron, something happens. What happens? He gets a positive charge. Now, why charge? does he get a positive charge? Because electrons are negatively charged. Well, Mr. Sams, I have a problem. Oh, uh, you have a marker on your head. Well, it's, wait, actually, wait. it's actually an electron. Oh. Let me help you. <laughs> I gotta help you. Hang on a sec. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> there. Ow! It's in my eye. Okay, we got it. All right. All so right. I have a problem. <laughs> What's your problem? <laughs> I have a marker stuck on my head. Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> but it's an electron. And you see, I do not really want this electron. Okay. Because you see, I have an extra electron, like okay. the sodium atom. All right. Got the idea? Okay. And you really want I, I want that electron. You're the tape I guy. Do. I am. Uh, you're the tape guy, so what would you do if you were like a chlorine atom? I, I'm going to try to get that marker and I'm going to tape it to my head. I think you actually need to take it. I, I, I think I'm going to take this ah! marker. Oh, I'm putting it your, on you. I don't want your nose grease tape. Oh, have mercy. I'll get my actually, own, put that my own nose grease. that really, really good because, you see, I wanted to get rid of that you did. electron. And guess what happened? You wanted to take the I electron. I did. Now I'm going to take it and tape it on my nose. You see, by the way, you know when I had that, uh, that nose? My nose with the marker on my head. Uh -huh. I I didn't feel very positive about myself. I felt pretty bad. Because you, you see, a marker on your head. Because well, electrons are negatively charged. And so when I gave you my negatively charged electron, or you took it, uh -huh. I felt really I feel really good about myself. So you feel. I feel positive. positive. And of course, you took my electron away from me, uh -huh. so you feel. Negative. I'm kind of feeling kind of guilty. Yeah. Yeah. So you're feeling pretty bad. Yeah. That you took it. That from I me. took it. Yeah. And, and you get I the look, idea. That I look pretty ridiculous. So folks, you get too. the idea. <laughs> yeah. Is. He took the electron from me, yep. and now he feels very negative because, mm. of course, he looks ugly. He's but ugly anyways. And so you see, I feel positive because I got rid of the ugly nose. Now he's the ugly one. I was ugly, now he's ugly. You get the idea? All right, I think we get the idea. And I got to use tape. Too. Okay, so Mr. We're back again live on Better Person. Okay, so what actually happens is the sodium then, picture one, and we have picture two. The sodium now has a positive one charge. That was me, of course, the good-looking guy, because I feel positive. At least I felt mm. positive. And Mr. Sams gets that extra electron. So instead of having seven, he now has eight. And here's the eighth one right there. And he has a negative charge. Now, what happens now with the sodium? Why does the sodium connect to the chloride? Because opposites attract. Yeah, so positive attract and negative. So actually, we, if we were to take our analogy further, we should have, like, hooked up together. And that sounds wrong. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, that is wrong. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> covalent bond. Now, in a covalent bond, something else happens. What goes there? That's covalent. Uh, that's where they're sharing. Oh, it's a very nice. It's like when you yeah. in kindergarten, you learned how to share. So they share valence electrons. And when they share, we could say, for example, take chlorine and say a uh, chlorine. So chlorine has, as you call, Jim, just a minute seven. ago, seven. Seven. And you see, they want to have eight. eight. And so if they could share that extra one, maybe a circle around all of them, he now has eight. Mm -hmm. And if I go like this and he shares that one, he has eight. So, and then the overlap is and, going to be the covalent bond, the sharing the, of those two. So you would actually draw it like this. You'd say CL line, CL. Now that line, this line, is equal to those two electrons mm -hmm. that are shared. And then you would have the additional electrons. And now we haven't done Lewis dot structures. I believe that's the next podcast or something subsequent. But I want you to get the idea. They share, and that's what makes the bonding. Sharing is caring. Share. <laughs>